Hello everybody, I am the Proactive Caregiver and I specialize in educating others on how to be proactive by empowering you, the caregiver, because if you cannot take care of yourself, then you cannot take care of your loved one. Last month, I had the opportunity to speak with Lynn Greenblack of Caregiving Cafe, and we discussed some of the issues that we as caregivers face that are related to language barriers. But it's not just being bilingual or trilingual. Some of us are having problems with medical language. I'll tell you what I mean in just a moment. You are not your disease or your illness. Have you heard that one before? I know I have. But sometimes communicating is hard. And so our illnesses do feel like they are who we have become. It's one thing to talk about what my symptoms are, to being able to describe what is my body doing and, and how is it affecting me on a day-to-day -day basis, and then explaining that to a doctor so that they can understand and then figure out what they need to do or how they can help me. The problem is, if you're not given the attention that you think you deserve because there is a language barrier, Yes, it begins with being able to speak the language, English, Spanish, or other. But if you're not getting the attention that you think you need, keep searching for it, keep going elsewhere. Your area may be limited, but there are more online options so you don't have to stop where you're at and then feel isolated because you cannot only express what you're feeling in terms of your illness. And I say illness, but that may also be as a caregiver, burnout and depression and stress and anxiety and all kinds of other ailments that comes with it because we feel that physically in our bodies. But if you continue to seek others for help, you may come across someone who is experiencing something that you are, and so they can tell you related to relate with you and say, this is what I dealt with, this is what I did, and this is what helped. Again, as caregivers, we teach each other. And I know this might sound easier said than done because of these language barriers, but it's something that, like many of the caregiver resources, and other issues that we're facing as far as lacking help, it's another thing as caregivers that we're gonna have to fix together or work on together because we will make that difference together. So last weekend, I had the opportunity to attend another caregiving conference and I met a beautiful Indian woman who came forward and she talked about her frustrations of navigating our current systems and the medical system, the language barriers, all of that specifically for immigrants. Now, I could feel her pain. I could understand the frustration because all we want to do is help our loved one. But we have all these challenges that we cannot face or even know where to begin, how to whittle down and reduce the stress connected to these problems. But at one point I looked over to my colleague because we were a little stumped of how do we help her in her current issue? Because quite honestly, as my colleague said, I know your frustration, but the system doesn't work for either of us, immigrants or otherwise. This language barrier is not just learning to speak the language in that 
community or country or state or how wherever you're at. It is also a medical language because the problem here is that even if they hear some of your ailments and you're able to express it, the first thing that is processed from their side is what is the connecting billable code that goes with that ailment. If there's a code that we can bill for, then we can decide if we can help them. If there's not a code that that falls under, suddenly they're saying, oh, there's nothing we can do for you. Oh, it's just aging. You just have to deal with it, which is what I've heard many times for the perimenopause, which was and still is very frustrating. But this goes beyond frustrating because as caregivers trying to help our loved ones who eventually, due to the stress and all of these conditions that we're working with, we eventually have our own ailments that need help. And as I said, if you cannot take care of yourself, then you cannot take care of your loved ones. So this becomes very vital for you to be able to communicate and express what your needs are sooner than later. So my own personal situation, and I'm sharing this as the professional trying to give you advice, but also personally, because I'm living it. And I am up to here with this. My lessons are to share with you. I have gone to doctor after doctor after doctor. And after finally being frustrated, seeking prayer and guidance and strength in my spiritual practices, I eventually was led to a naturopathic doctor, which was extremely helpful and the biggest game changer I could have ever expected because I finally found a doctor that took the time to listen to my ailments and help describe what I was experiencing, when things started, how things evolved, what could have been the initial uh, start of it instead of saying, oh, it sounds like you're dealing with X, Y, Z, and here's the prescription pad, and here's some pain medicine, and here's to deal with it, and just check back with me in six months. What I'm talking about is I had to find a naturopathic doctor because I was experiencing kidney failure. And at first it wasn't a big issue, at least I thought it wasn't because that's what other docs or doctors were telling me. It's not that bad. You're young. You're, um, you've got plenty of time. You don't have to worry about anything. Just drink more water. Make another appointment, check back in six months, and we'll check your blood again. I did this for about two years before I finally started to look into the details myself because I wasn't able to communicate understanding what it was that I needed and how to tell them to run specific tests. Because if I said I wasn't having symptoms or I wasn't experiencing any pain or there wasn't something specifically that they could quickly prescribe to, they would tell me there's nothing they can do for me. Thankfully, this naturopathic doctor was able to hear what I was dealing with, what I had experienced, and she actually asked for my previous blood tests so that she could go through the details with me and explain what each of them meant and what was normal for the typical test, the low, average, high range, what was considered normal for the broad public was actually high for me in some categories or too low for me. So having this information and being able to communicate this to her made a world of difference because I immediately thought of my mother and how many times I took her to the doctor's office to explain similar issues with kidney failure. And they would tell me, oh, it's just part of this. There's nothing we can do. When quite honestly, there was something more to do, but I feel that once a person is diagnosed with dementia, in some cases, they just see that patient as a lost cause. Not always. And I know that's a generalized statement because when someone is living with dementia, they're typically having other issues that led to the dementia. So if they're having diabetes, heart issues, and yes, kidney failure, then you're going to be affected with dementia. 
And so when this happened, I realized, am I on the road towards what mom was eventually living with? And so instead of responding as mom did, oh, we're going to die someday, I might as well just enjoy life as it is and overindulge with food and whatever else, desserts and stuff, and just kind of let this medical issue fester. That wasn't good enough for me because I wanted a better quality of life. And I want to keep being young and living life as a healthy young woman, as these doctors keep reminding me as what I know. I am healthy for the most part. I look healthy on the outside. But if they're not going to take the time to review my results and see that there is a steady decline, there had been a steady decline, then I'm not going to sit around and wait until I'm on dialysis for them to finally come forward because there are billable codes. There's something that they can bill for. Once my naturopathic doctor clarified what was actually happening and explaining the damage that was done to my kidney, because as a caregiver who was highly stressed, dehydrated, and reaching stages of burnout, a UTI, urinary tract infection, can affect us far more than we know and than we realized. So I share this with you because I hear a lot of caregivers saying how fatigued they are, how drained they are. And yes, there's a lot of mental exhaustion. There is a lot of emotional exhaustion involved. But even when you're feeling like you're having a good day or your loved one had a, a better day than they did the day before and you've got small moments to celebrate, but you're still so exhausted, that's your body giving you an indication that it needs a little extra help. That was something I wasn't paying attention until I started to look at my blood test results, focusing in on acronyms that I never thought I would need to understand, looking at my GFR schedules or the numbers of the GFRs and watching them decline and going, wait a minute, what's happening here? Oh no, this is stage three. And stage four is usually when dialysis is started or recommended to be started. That was a big wake up call for me. That was a panic. And that was when I realized a lot of the issues that mom was facing were not necessary for all of us to have to deal with because our current system is so darn <laughs> difficult to understand with this medical language barrier. And what I mean is it really comes down to what can we bill for? If you don't fit into that billable codes, you may not get the help you need. Or you might get it and get a huge sticker shock of an invoice later. The ironic thing is that when mom was thriving and teaching in her middle school, for 32 years, majority of her teaching was as an ESL teacher, which is English as a second language. She knew growing up, Spanish being her first language, and then coming to um, New York and eventually to Texas, learning and speaking English more freely, more often, she wanted to make a difference and change that for the students that she saw coming through, for the ones that were ridiculed because they didn't understand the language or couldn't speak it easily and clearly. Well, that is an ugly side of society that we can't handle, we can't fix right now, especially if there's a lot more lessons on compassion involved. But as a caregiver, you are already facing so many stressful situations. You are already up against the level of, I don't want to do this anymore. This is so hard. Why does this get any harder? Why isn't anybody helping me? Because I don't understand how to speak their language. And even though I spoke English with the doctor, I didn't speak medical language. I know there are services out there that we can actually 
utilize um, in today's technology age. You can use Google translations. You can even hire and search for translators to have with you either um, on phone calls with you or pres present with you in appointments. But you're looking at anywhere from $20 an hour to $75 an hour, if you're lucky, for these translation services. I can't give you the perfect answer for how to fix this other than trying, not giving up and trying to find someone, family, friends, having friends and family, asking their friends and family for help and resources and using the services at AARP and Age of Central Texas. If you have some an age in your area, using those services that are there because they are finally starting to add a lot more of, of the bilingual services to help caregivers. I am in a position that because I finally started to read my blood test results and understand each of the acronyms, what it means. I know not everybody would go for that and it's not the kind of information you wanna to have to do, but I got desperate and I was truly scared. As mom used to say, we're all gonna die someday. I agree. I know my time will be someday, but until it is, I wanna live the best quality of life as a caregiver as possible. And part of that is self-care. And so finding the naturopathic doctor and being able to speak to her as if it wasn't just doctor patient, but friend a friend saying, I'm scared. I don't know what this means. Help me understand. And then receiving explanations that I could take more so in the little pieces instead of feeling like I'm getting more medical language that I don't understand and all I'm hearing is they can't help me. It made a difference having someone listen and respond in such a way that she could define, here's your treatment plan. This is what we're going to do. We are going to test your blood more frequently so that we can see what's working far sooner than waiting every six months. Because I'm telling you, if I stayed on that track, I would have been on, heading towards dialysis a lot faster. Thankfully, because of what she was doing and trying to be more proactive in this process in my own self-care, I have gone from the stage three back up to stage two. And I am expecting even more improvements as I continue to work with this doctor and feel more at peace and ease that I can express my concerns, I can express my symptoms, and this doctor will be able to respond to it. So if you know of a doctor in your area or look online for a naturopathic doctor, I am suggesting, I'm not giving any medical advice in that sense, but suggesting that you consider that because it's a different kind of medical doctor that looks at the detail and you as a human being differently. By the time I got to my third opinion, the third medical doctor that I was working with had moved to Texas from Massachusetts. Our conversation during our quick exam was kind of shocking, but not entirely, because even this doctor, after not being in Texas for very long, was shocked at how little patient-centric care there is here. That where she left was far more patient oriented where the doctors were actually able to spend more time with their patients and learn what their needs were, as opposed to some of the systems that are in place here and other areas where they just put you in this appointment wheel of every 15 minutes. And what is your insurance cover and how, oh, you don't have insurance. Well, we, okay, let's put someone else in this spot. Um, we can't help you. And this what I call sick cycle of a game that leads to the capitalistic society. If you don't know the language, you can't thrive. 
Well, even when we do know the language, we still have a challenge in thriving. Being proactive is not easy. It's going to push you outside of your comfort zone. It has absolutely pushed me outside of my comfort zone. But I want to urge you not to give up and try to go outside of that comfort zone. Because had I not, I wouldn't have found the naturopathic doctor. And I wouldn't have been able to experience the results, the improvements that I have. I share this information with you because... It is personal to me now more than it is about being professional and being proactive. Caregivers shouldn't have to go through these challenges with declining health on top of everything else you're trying to juggle. You can make a difference if you pay close attention to your self-care because you are worth it. You deserve to take care of yourself. And in many cases, in most cases, You have to take care of yourself because who else is going to take care of your loved one if something happens to you? Thank you for joining in. I hope this episode gave you a little bit more food for thought about becoming proactive. If you want more information, you can look at proactivecaregiver.com for more episodes. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, be proactive. Take care, everybody.